started as I was praying this week and and reading the Bible, I just started reading in Daniel. And uh, I want us to turn to Jeremiah before we turn to Daniel, to Jeremiah the 25th chapter. And I want us to read a little bit. You know, nothing God does is ever done swiftly. And, and every time he, he warns us to straighten up, to live right, to live the way that he wants us to live, he gives, he gives time. He gives you time. He doesn't just come in and do it the next day after he speaks the things that he speaks. And, uh, and I was thinking about that when I was reading Daniel. I thought, uh, boy, you know, how could God allow his people to, to get to the point where he would have to bring the kind of judgment that he brought by letting a nation, a heathen nation, come in and take them over and realize suddenly that the Old Testament's a book of war. That's exactly what it's about. It's about the war of good against evil. That's what the whole Old Testament is. And God gave Israel a whole, a whole parcel of land that didn't belong to them. It belonged to someone else. And God said, if you'll follow me, if you'll love me, if you'll serve me, if you do what I tell you to do, you stay away from evil, uh, from idols, and you, and you remain faithful unto me, and you serve me and love me with all your heart. Nobody is ever going to be able to take you out of this land. This is your land. The word that came to Jeremiah concerning the people of Judah in the fourth year of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, which was the first year of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. Now that's what we're going to look at this one was the king of Babylon <clears throat> which Jeremiah the prophet spoke to all the people of Judah and to all of the inhabitants of Jerusalem saying from the 13th year of Josiah the son of Ammon the king of Judah even to this day this is the 23rd year in which the word of the Lord has come to me and I have spoken to you rising early and speaking but you have not listened and I, and I, I just, I, I thought about, you know, we don't, I don't think we really take God as serious as we ought to take Him. Because God is serious when He says something. When He, when he wrote it down in His book, when He had it recorded, and He left it for us, He intends for you and I to see the devastation, the pitfalls, and everything of not serving God. If we don't serve God, who are we going to serve? You either serve God or you serve Satan. One of the, one of the two. You're going to serve one of those. So, so he said, But you have not listened. The Lord has sent to you all his servants, the prophets, rising early and sending them. But you have not listened, nor inclined your ear to hear. They said, Repent now every one of his evil way and his evil doings, and dwell in the land that the Lord has given to your fathers forever and ever. So what God did for, for Israel, he wasn't doing just some simple thing. He was taking care of a nation and he was saying, it's yours forever. Nobody can take it away from you. It's yours if you do what's right, if you follow me. When you think, when you think about that, you think, well, God, where, where are you? What have you been doing? You know, why? Why is this happening to your people? It wasn't happening to just some heathen nation. It was happening to the nation of God. And, and we've got so many people preaching today that God could never have the judgment on this nation that he had on Israel. Oh, why, why would you think that? Why would you think that? God said, if God judged the nation of Israel, how much more? Should you and I serve God with all our heart? Because he left that for an example to us. Scripture tells the Old Testament is an example of what goes wrong. And we're not supposed to go on living the way we're living, doing what we're doing, and thinking we're getting away with it. But we've got a whole world that's living to themselves. They're doing what they want to do. They're seeing what they want to see. They're hearing what they want to see. And, and these are the things that God begins to speak to people about.
And he came to, to Jerusalem and he besieged it. And the Lord gave Jehoiakim, king of Judah, into his hands with some of the articles of the house which he carried into the land of Shinar to the house of his God. And, God, and Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with this portion of the king's delicacies, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore he requested the chief of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. Now God had brought Daniel into favor and goodwill of the chief of the eunuchs. And the chief of the eunuchs said to Daniel, I fear my lord the king, who has appointed your food and drink. For why should he see your faces looking worse than the young men who are your age. Then you would endanger my head before the king. So Daniel said to the steward, whom the chief of the eunuchs had set over Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, please test your servants for 10 days and let them give, the, give us vegetables to eat and water to drink. Then let our appearance be ex ex examined before you and the appearance of the young men who eat the portion of the king's jealousies. And as you see fit, so deal with your servants. So they consented with them in this matter and tested them ten days. And at the end of ten days, their features appeared better and fatter in flesh than all the young men who, are, uh, who ate the portions of the king's delicacies. Then the steward took away their portion of the delicacies and the wine, and they were to drink and gave them vegetables. And for, and for these four young men, God gave them knowledge and skill in all literature and wisdom. Daniel had an understanding in all visions and dreams. And at the end of the days, when the king had said that they should be brought in, the chief of the eunuchs brought them in before Nebuchadnezzar. Then the king interviewed them. And among them all, was found, none was found like Hananiah, Daniel, and Michelle, and Azariah. Therefore they, they served before the king. And, all, and listen to this, and all matters of wisdom and understanding about which the king examined them, he found them ten times better than all the magicians and astrologers who were in the realm. Thus Daniel continued until the first year of King Cyrus. So what I'm, what I'm said, we don't want to eat what you're eating. We don't want to drink what you're drinking. We don't want to be what you are. We want to be what the Lord wants us to be. Our God wants us to refuse this. We want to serve our God. And the, and the eunuch said, well, how? I, I can't do that. I fear the king. He, he could take my life. He could cut me off just in, the, in a second. Daniel said, well, give us 10 days and try us and see what happens. And we just read what happened at the end of 10 days. They were stronger and, and uh, you know, their, their stature and their nature and their looks and everything was better than the other guys and they had more muscle on their, on their bones than any of the rest of them did. And, and when they went before the king, after, after a period of time, and when they stood before that king, the king said, these are the smartest four men in all my kingdom. These were God's people. Now you wonder how these guys, when we read Jeremiah, it sounded like everybody turned away from God. But what he was saying was the leaders and the people that were teachers and the people that knew better were the people that weren't serving God. So the punishment that came, came on the land. He didn't leave good people out. There were, I, I don't think everybody was wrong in that day. I believe there were some good people. And, and I look at America today and I don't think everybody's wrong. I think there are some good people. But I think when judgment comes, it doesn't make any difference to God whether you're good or whether you're bad. It's whether you've been obedient. That's all God cares about. Because if, we, if things go wrong, we look at people and say, well, wouldn't, they wouldn't go wrong if you were living right. Remember, that's what Job, 
Job's servants told him, or Job's friends told him, if you lived right, nothing would happen like this. It's because you've sinned. But it's because we get away from God and what God demands out of our life. God doesn't just say, I wish you'd do it. He said, do it. If you do it, you can live forever and ever in this land. Nobody could ever put you off of it. Nobody could have ever taken Israel away from there and taken those things away from them. But what happened was they lost all these things. They lost their land. They lost their home. Well, I shouldn't say they lost their land. The people were allowed to, to live there and till the soil. But it belonged to the king. Everything they had belonged to the king. And Israel was doing the best job that they could do. But the thing is, that's wrong with so many people. We don't think right. In fact, we don't even think sometimes. Have you ever had your mouth get ahead of your brain? I have. And it's an easy thing to do. And we, and we live so much according to the flesh. And I see what happens. And so everybody looks at you and everybody looks at me the way we respond to every situation of life. And I'm not just preaching to you, I'm preaching to me. God cares about what we think. God cares about what we say. God cares about what we do. He cares about the attitude that we have. And He, and he cares about how we look at other people. And we just cast them off in our mind because they aren't what we want them want them to be. God wants us to realize that everybody has a responsibility. The man who teaches has a responsibility. The people who hear have a responsibility. In everything in our life we have a responsibility. It isn't just mom and dad's life. It isn't just their fault. It isn't what they say and what they do. Good or bad. It's what you do with your life. You can never blame anybody else when you stand before God. You never be able to blame your mom or your dad or your brother or your sister or anything else. You'll never be able to blame any of them for the way you are. And God saw to it and He said, you're going to stay in that land 70 years. This isn't going to be just for a little while. It's going to be for 70 years. So Daniel knew when he was taken because he'd read the scriptures and he knew what they said. He knew that they were going to be there for 70 years. Remember at the end of getting close to the end of that time. Remember how God began to deal with Daniel and Daniel began to hear from God and he knew the time was coming that they were going to be released. He didn't want them to just be released. He wanted them to be released to Jerusalem. He wanted them to restore the temple. He wanted to get back to doing what God said we need to be doing. Now he lived through three kings. And he was a number one man for all three kings. Actually it said he was the third ruler in the last king's family. But he lived, he lived at the top of the rank. And he always served his God. And serving God doesn't mean everything's going to go right. A lot of things can go wrong. You know, you, I, you, you have bad days. Some days you just have bad days. They aren't good. And you haven't done anything different or you haven't done anything terrible, but they're just a bad day. And the Bible said in the world you'll have tribulation. You'll have problems. They're going to be there. We're not going to run away from them. It's how people live. It's what they do with what they have. It's what they say out of their mouth, what they see with their eyes, what they hear with their ears. You know, these are the things that we need to realize is it isn't God that's bad. There's no bad in God. It's because we are inherent to sin. Sin came to us. We were born into it. We couldn't help it. It wasn't our fault. But we're going to be judged according to the way we live in this sinful life. And if we don't take Jesus Christ, and we don't allow His blood to cover us, 
and we don't allow what he did for us at the cross to take its root in our heart and we don't begin to walk with God and we don't begin to live for God and we don't begin to serve God, this nation is going to come to something so much worse than what these people did back in that day thousands of years ago. Why is that? Because we know better. The Word of God lives with us. The Word of God is around us. The Word of God is here all the time. When we pick up the book and we read it, we realize that God is here. And He's speaking to us and He's saying something to us. Why is it that we're so hard of hearing? We can hear, but we don't hear. Or we can hear, but we don't listen. We pay no attention to what God is saying to us. We think everything's just going to keep on going on. And I, and I know tons of Christians that feel exactly that way. Oh, there's nothing you can do about what's in the world. There's nothing what you can do about what's in the church. There's nothing you can do about anything else. And all they do is complain about everything. That's what Israel was doing. They were wrecking havoc with everything God said. They wouldn't listen. They wouldn't obey. They wouldn't believe. They wouldn't trust. They infiltrated into everything in their life, everything they were doing that was wrong, everything they shouldn't have been doing, and it was there. But Daniel was so strong in God, and he prayed every day, three times every day, opened the window up, and it pointed out into the, in the atmosphere, and he would worship God and praise God. And everybody heard that, and everybody knew it. And the king built himself a statue, 90 feet tall. Anybody that doesn't bow their knee and worship the gods of Baal and worship me as the king, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to destroy them. I'll kill them. I won't let them live. And Daniel's the number one man in that kingdom. Number one, besides the king. He's number one, highest man in the kingdom. And some of the people that were there said, well, we hear this guy over here praying. And every day he prays. And every day he worships his God. And he's not here today, and he won't fall down and worship your idol. So the king calls him in. He falls. He says, "You want to either fall down and worship me, or you're going to die and worship this idol." And he said, "No, I won't do it." So they put him in a lion's den. And the scripture said, "The Lord closed the mouth of the lions, and Daniel could sleep on them. Made a good pillow. That's what they were good for." And he slept through that night, and he was praising God. And the king, the Bible said the king couldn't even sleep because he didn't want to punish him even though he wasn't serving his God because he knew the difference between his God and his gods, between Daniel's God and his gods. And so he, he rose early in the morning and he went down and he said, Daniel, has your God preserved you? Is he taken care of you? Daniel said, yes. Oh, King, I'm right here. God closed the mouth of the lions, and he brought him out. And the, and the men who condemned him, he destroyed. And he said, from now on, Daniel's God will be the greatest God in this land. I had a lot more things I wanted to say, but I can't say them this morning. So we're going to baptize Philip, and, and we're going to hopefully get it done right. I don't know that pond's awful small, but... We'll see what we can do out there.